Hey guys, Caitlin here. And for this week's YouTube video, I wanted to talk about cluster headaches. So cluster headaches are one of the three common types of headaches. So there's cluster headaches, migraines, and then there's tension headaches. With migraines, you're gonna have that unilateral throbbing headache with associated nausea and vomiting. Sometimes there might be an aura preceding this headache. Other times you will have uh, associated photophobia, hyperacusis, the headache's really going to be aggravated by movement. And then tension headaches are going to be a lot opposite of this. It's going to be more of a global headache, squeezing in nature. They might have uh, tight trapezius muscles associated with a lot of stress, not aggravated by movement, usually no nausea or vomiting, and usually no photophobia or hyperacusis. Now, when it comes to cluster headaches, make sure you follow the DSM-5 diagnosis for these. Uh, it's usually going to include headaches that come in clusters, so headaches that can last for 15 or up to 180 minutes at a time. Usually cluster headaches are really unilateral, kind of like migraines, but they're usually centered around the eye, a little above the eye, or the in, in the temporal area. And then a lot of times cluster headaches, you need at least one of the following physical exam findings. You need to have injected conjunctiva, uh, you need to have lacrimation from the eye, uh, maybe a little bit of eyelid edema, uh, rhinorrhea or nasal congestion. Uh, usually in the forehead, there's a lot of sweating in that area or just anhydrosis actually. And we'll talk about Horner syndrome in a little bit. Sometimes with uh, cluster headaches, you can have Horner syndrome, which is meiosis. So uh, the pupil is going to be smaller in the affected eye. Uh, and then ptosis, which is just the eyelid drooping a little bit or anhydrosis, so a lack of sweating on that side. So they might have a lot of sweating on the other side. Uh, these patients may be very agitated and restless in the room as well. Uh, just make sure you follow the DSM. Uh, criteria for diagnosis. If you're in the emergency department and trying to make this first diagnosis, usually you have to rule out other big and bad things and then the neurologist makes the diagnosis. But uh, following those criteria can really help you identify a cluster headache versus something else. So as I mentioned before, uh, cluster headaches can be associated with something called Horner syndrome. And this syndrome is a combination of Ptosis, so eyelid drooping, meiosis, the pupil in the infected eye is constricted, and anhydrosis, so there is a lack of sweating on the affected eye. So if the headaches on this side, you're going to see all these physical exam findings on that side. Now, just remember that if you see Horner syndrome, this isn't always associated with a cluster headache. You can have lung cancer that causes this um, or something like a carotid artery dissection. So just keep in mind that this syndrome isn't always associated with something as benign as a cluster headache. And a lot of these patients uh, are going to be middle-aged men. And the triggers that often precede their cluster headaches, unfortunately, may be alcohol. Uh, it may wake them up in the middle of the night. Um, they may have uh, gotten done with using nitroglycerin use or any histamine release can trigger uh, cluster headaches. Now with a patient presenting to you in the emergency department complaining of a headache, and it sure does sound like a cluster headache, before you go and treat them for a cluster headache, ask the patient, have they ever been diagnosed with a cluster headache? And if they have, then um, usually this is done by a neurologist and they've ruled out some of the other big bad causes of headaches. But if they haven't, uh, definitely ask the patients. And in my mind, always ask any patient uh, with a headache some of the red flags for the headache. And for this, I like to use the mnemonic SNOOP. Uh, so the S will stand for systemic signs and symptoms. So are they having any fevers? Are they having any neck stiffness concerning for meningitis? Or are they having persistent night sweats and now their headache is worse in the morning and they have a little bit of weight loss that's unexplained concerning for cancer? 
uh, or do they have a previous diagnosis of cancer? Now that they're having these headaches, that's concerning for a uh, secondary cancer going to the brain. Uh, and then the N will stand for any neurologic symptoms. So this is obviously concerning for stroke or any mass lesions. O can stand for an onset greater than 50 years old, obviously concerning for giant cell arteritis or any glaucoma, uh, since these headaches tend to go and present around the eye, definitely make sure that the eye doesn't feel hard. There's no acute angle glaucoma. Uh, you definitely don't want to diagnose them with a cluster headache when they had acute angle glaucoma. And then the next O can stand for an onset that happens suddenly, obviously concerning for a subarachnoid hemorrhage that with a sudden onset, the worst headache of your life that we all read about in books. And then the P's can stand for papilledema, obviously concerning for intracranial hypertension, uh, any positional changes, or uh, the headache may be precipitated by Valsalva, um, or any progressive headaches, any new or changing headaches are all red flags of a headache. And make sure you ask this with almost every single patient. So when you're asking some of those red flags for a headache, you obviously don't wanna miss some of the more dangerous causes of a headache in that area that may sound like a cluster headache. Um, like I mentioned before, Horner syndrome can be seen in carotid artery dissection, so make sure the patient doesn't have any neck pain. Um, you usually don't miss this. These patients are in extreme pain and uh, they will have symptoms in this area. Obviously, you don't want to miss giant cell arteritis, so if they have any tenuous palpation in this area and um, they have other signs or symptoms of giant cell arteritis like jaw codification, then definitely work them up in that regard. Uh, other signs um, or other headaches are trigeminal neuralgia. You can have TMJ syndrome obviously going up into that area. Um, so just kind of think about some of the mimics, acute sinusitis um, or a glaucoma. You don't want to miss these other headaches that can precipitate like cluster headaches, but obviously be a little more dangerous. So just keep in, keep in mind of the mimics of a cluster headache as well. And when it comes to the treatment of a cluster headache, usually this is very simple. High flow oxygen is the treatment of choice. So these patients need to have oxygen up to 10 liters at a time and, and do that till their headache per uh, gets better. So, and then you can also do some of the other headache treatments like sumatriptan. Um, I've done that as well, along with intranasal lidocaine 4%. These are all very helpful in addition to help control the cluster headaches. And that's it guys. Thanks for listening. If you like this video, make sure to press like at the bottom. If you like all of our videos, make sure you subscribe to our page so you don't miss anything. All right. See you next week, guys.